Uh, welcome you all to the next class on inorganic chemistry of life principles and perspectives. In the previous uh, few classes we have looked at uh, enzymes pertinent to zinc. Uh, you know that zinc does not undergo redox, but there are reactions which undergo redox and a lot of reactions are hydrolytic type like the peptide bond hydrolysis, uh, ester bond hydrolysis and addition of water to carbon dioxide etc. So, a variety of things we have looked at. We have also looked at the uh, group transfers, we have also looked at the ligase properties where the two uh, broken pieces are joined together. So, all of these were pertinent to the uh, zinc. Now, in this class let us begin with the uh, biological inorganic chemistry of uh, molybdenum. So, when it comes to the word molybdenum, I am sure every one of us is reminded of one particular thing that is what? That is a nitrogen cycle and because nitrogen fixation is involved uh, in this. Okay. So, this is the famous nitrogen cycle that you see which we study in a high school uh, you know general biology course basically you see it. So, nitrogen present in the atmosphere uh, on one side you have the industrial way conversion to ammonia and ammonia converting to nitrates, nitrites and to the nitrates and these are you have a lot of enzymes nitrifying bacteria when we say bacteria is working, it is basically it is the enzymes of the bacteria that works. So, we need to as a chemist, we need to look at the bacteria as an enzyme, uh, a biologist will look at it as a bacteria as a, a creature which does it. Now, so the nitrate uh, ammonia to nitrate is what process oxidation. So, this is a uh, bacteria, then NO2 nitrate to nitrate is what process? is again oxidation. So, you have an oxidative kind of a reactions on this side and from N2 to ammonia what do you have? M2 to ammonia is a reduction. So, you have a reducing type of an enzymes, oxidative type of enzymes too. In the biological system what you would see there is a nitrogen fixation you call it as because nitrogen source is required for synthesizing protein, nucleic acids, many other things even modified. Uh, carbohydrates, etc., etc., a lot of cases. So, in other words, entire biological mantle requires a input of nitrogen, which comes from the metabolizing the or uh, by converting the nitrogen or fixing the nitrogen into the form of, for example, ammonia. This part is not very important for us, and this is. So, this particular thing is done by an enzyme called nitrogenase. So, that is what actually happens when we say molybdenum immediately what comes to our mind is nitrogen cycle and what comes to our mind is nitrogenase enzyme nitrogen fixing. So, uh, we will see very soon that the enzymes of molybdenum not only involved in the reduction of uh, nitrogen to ammonia, they are also oxidation oxidized kind of enzymes are there too. We will come to all that as we keep moving across this molybdenum story. Okay. Let us uh, uh, look at uh, the kind the enzyme that we were talking about the nitrogenase, nitrogenase based on the molybdenum. I have mentioned the term nitrogenase earlier stage. Can anybody recollect that was in the time when we were talking about the vanadium and I mentioned that the some of the organisms acquire nitrogenase even in the absence of molybdenum, but uh, for them vanadium is required. And at that time I promised that the molybdenum uh, enzyme nitrogenase will be fully detailedly studied and that is what we are going to take up now in this particular class and maybe this class perhaps even the next class also. So, we will try to look at those things. So, nitrogenase, nitrogenase is, is a primarily a reducing agent. So, for a reducing agent what do you require? electrons. Okay. So, to remove some oxygen when you reduce, you need protons also. So, basically you require for a reduce uh, reducing a substrate you require electrons, in some cases you require both electrons and protons as well. So, basically it is a 
proton electron couple transfer reactions are carried out by the enzyme nitrogenase. Okay, if you give uh, what all the nitrogenase enzyme when you take in a test tube what it can do? In in vivo what it can do the first reaction the N 2 plus 8 H plus plus 8 electron is 2 N H 3 plus H 2. This is the first uh, reaction this is the enzymatic reaction uh, though uh, the required uh, a, you know equivalence is different from this. Uh, let me show you the required equivalent equivalents or the actually what you need is N 2 plus uh, H 2 this is the uh, 3 H 2 then this is nothing but 2 N H 3. Okay. So, uh, so generally the hydrogen is not supplied in the biological system. So, the, as far as the biological system is concerned that is you require 6 H plus plus 6 electrons uh, which is giving 2 N H 3. Why do we need uh, 6 electrons? The N N N 2 has N N triple bond. So, the triple bond requires 3 into 2 6 electrons. So, therefore, if you put 6 electrons into the uh, antibonding orbitals or the nitrogen molecule, you start breaking the uh, bonding between the nitrogen and nitrogen. So, if you put 2 electrons, 1 bond is reduced. If you put 4 electrons, 2 bonds are reduced. If you put 3 electrons, 6, uh, six electrons, 3 bonds are reduced. So, that is how it is. So, the enzyme does by electrons and protons does not give directly the hydrogen. So, as, so this is the reaction, but the reaction that we saw in the case of enzyme is N 2 plus 8 H plus plus 8 electrons giving rise to uh, 2 N H 3 plus H 2. This is in the enzyme, in the enzyme. So, so this is basically because the initial protons are reduced to hydrogen gas. Uh, in this case, as you can see, 2 H plus plus 2 electrons hydrogen gas. And once the hydrogen gas leaves the active site, then the uh, nitrogen gets uh, activated. So, therefore, if you add uh, this reaction of uh, the N2 uh, reaction of uh, uh, the hydrogen nitrogen plus hydrogen reaction. Let us uh, take as I have written already on, in the previous sheet, I will rewrite here plus 6 H plus plus 2 uh, 6 electrons giving 2 N H 3 and the enzyme also can do 2 H plus plus 2 electrons giving H 2. The total reaction is N 2 plus 8 H plus plus 8 electrons giving rise to 2 N H 3 plus H 2. So, this is happens at the enzyme, happens at the enzyme nitrogenase. So, this is what happens that is why you see the reaction as uh, the N 2 plus 8 plus plus, plus 8 electrons giving to N 3. Okay, uh, the nitrogenase is also capable of reducing acetylene to ethylene. Acetylene is 2 C 2 H 2 ethylene C 2 H 4 again you require 2 protons plus 2 electrons. N 2 O can be reduced to N 2 and water because this oxygen will be pulled out by 2 electrons as the O 2 minus plus 2 protons and that will become the H 2 O and azide can be reduced at different levels. Uh, at uh, a lower level of reduction it will give N 2 plus ammonia, a little more number of electrons 6 electrons it will give hydrazine plus ammonia, 8 electrons it will give ammonia fully. Okay. So, even azide ion, so what is happening? Azide initially goes for a nitrogen and ammonia and the nitrogen in turn goes to the hydrogen and the hydrogen in turn goes to the ammonia and that is what the total reaction is. So, that means this uh, enzyme is capable of supplying 2 electrons, 4 electrons, 6 electrons, 8 electrons 
all of these that you can see. Okay. Let us look at uh, another reaction that is the cyanide reduction. Cyanide reduction, there is a carbon based reduction, nitrogen based reduction. So, one can easily expect carbon will give carbon hydride which is methane, nitrogen will give nitrogen hydride which is nothing but the ammonia. Okay. So, nitrogen. Okay. So, therefore, you get the uh, carbon and uh, is, uh, is in the form of a methane, nitrogen in the form of ammonia. So, you get this uh, uh, methane plus ammonia. Okay. So, what are the things that we can notice from this? All the reactions have got uh, electrons taking in that means, they are all reduction. All the uh, process has got protons okay. and the proton plus electron can be 1 proton plus 1 electron is 1 h dot. 2 protons plus 2 electrons is H 2. So, therefore, you have an incipient hydrogen therefore, this hydrogen can react okay. and therefore, you have a reduction reactions. And other thing that you see all the products are uh, the gaseous in nature mostly. So, therefore, you have a mostly gaseous kind of reactions uh, coming into all of these. So, therefore, nitrogen is, is an enzyme which is capable of providing electrons and of course, proton chain connects it. Therefore, it is a reducing nature enzyme where the proton electron coupled reactions uh, take place. Okay. Let us look at this is only the reduction, but in the beginning I mentioned that the reactions go even for oxidative direction. Okay. So, so, what kind of things of the oxidative reductions, what kind of things or reactive kind of things? Both oxidative and reductive, oxido reductases. You see that molybdenum enzymes, molybdo enzymes, oxido reductases. Nitrate reductase going from nitrate to nitrite. In fact, you can take the reverse also, nitrite to nitrate. So, this is this is one is in one direction you call it as a nitrate reductase, in the other direction you can call it as a nitrite oxidase. So, it is the two forms of the same enzyme, two oxidative states of the same enzyme. So, in one enzyme in the reduced form the molybdenum will be in the molybdenum 4 state, in the oxidized form the molybdenum will be in the molybdenum 6 state, that is all the difference, the enzyme is the same. So, you can have a nitrate reductase, nitrite oxidase reverse. So, this reaction is NO3 minus plus 2 H plus plus 2 electrons giving the NO2 minus plus water. So, basically pulling out one of the oxygen okay, to give water. In the process, in the, in the, in the process you consume 2 electrons and 2 protons. So, let us see a, a different one which is a xanthine oxidase or oxidase can also be told as I mentioned earlier dehydrogenase. So, removing the hydrogen is the oxidation, adding oxygen is also oxidation, adding electrons is reduction, removing electrons is oxidation. So, keeping all those things in mind you see that uh, this is the moiety of the xanthine and oxidation giving uh, rise to uric acid. So, this is the so, what is the number of electrons protons? 2 electrons plus 2 protons and 1. Pyrimidine oxidase. So, it is basically 2 hydroxy pyrimidine going to dihydroxy, 2, 4 dihydroxy pyrimidine. So, it is oxidation. So, the first reaction is, is a kind of a reduction, then this is an oxidation, this is an oxidation. So, if the enzyme is in reduced form, it will act like a reductase. When the enzyme is in the oxidized form, it will act like in oxidase. But these are reactions are not done by the nitrogenase, I will be coming to that in a while. They are nitrate reductase, xanthine oxidase, pyrimidine oxidase. There is another example here shown trimethyl amine oxide reductase. So, this is reductase, the first one and the last one are reductase, the second one and third one are oxidase. So, here trimethyl amine N oxide giving rise to trimethylamine plus O. Again you require this O will go as water uh, that means you require 2 protons and 2 electrons. Okay. So, that is where we have uh, in the trimethylamine. So, you saw 2 reactions are, the, are being reduced, 2 reactions are being oxidized, these are 
basically oxidoreductases. As I said, these are not carried out by nitrogenase. So, what are they carried out by? Just before coming to that, in the nitrogenase, actual species is called cofactor, where the reaction occurs, where the nitrogen becomes ammonia. This particular cofactor, I will come with the more details later on, is a kind of a, a iron sulfur, there is a kind of a iron molybdenum sulfur coupled together or joined together or bridged together by these sulfides. And at the molybdenum, you have certain species bound. And this is called iron molybdenum cofactor. I will explain you fully in, uh, in, a, in a detailed fashion uh, after a few slides from now. Okay. So, this is a cofactor which functions in the nitrogenase. Now, look at another enzyme which we were talking about oxidoreductase enzyme. This enzyme has got a molybdenum here and this are the two thiols and these are the two thiols and this is the ene bond, okay? ene thiol moiety. Now, little bit examine this whole moiety here. There is one molecule here, there is another molecule exactly inverse in structural relation. This part is here, this part is here. So, let us look at this. This part is basically called terrin. So, this is the terrin moiety which is involved in the redox kind of a process, which is involved uh, in the uh, redox systems. Okay, this is, I will write down here, so that you will, P, P is silent, terrin. So, this is uh, uh, a cofactor and this can undergo uh, redox. This can undergo redox. So, this is a redox type of a cofactor. So, these are called terrins. Okay? So, you can see. So, there is one uh, terrin moiety connected to two phosphate, uh, the bridge phosphate with a sugar and with a nucleic base. Okay? So, this whole part is nucleotide, this whole part is terrin, terrin based nucleotide, nucleotide based terrin. This will act as an electron transfer system. So, it is basically organic electron transfer, then further you can have the molybdenum too and same thing is true. So, it is a 1 is to 2 complex where the molybdenum center is bound by the ene thiols and from both sides. So, this is again an enzyme uh, for the oxidoreductase, not for nitrogenase. This is for the nitrogenase, this is for oxidoreductase and also some more oxidoreductase are there where you have only one terrin, only one terrin. So, one molybdate center with one terrin, one molybdate center with one terrin and this terrin is modified by phosphate, terrin is modified by phosphate, both are same except for this at the molybdenum center you have S cysteine here and you have uh, double bond S, double bond O and OH. So, here you have a dioxin. So, this is a basically a dioxo center. Generally to keep in mind, whenever you have a dioxo double bond oxo center, this is molybdenum 6. When you have a one uh, single molybdenum uh, oxo, uh, then it is 4. Suppose one double bond oxo, one double bond sulfur again 6. So, molybdenum has two favorite oxidation states. This is a structural form of the same. As you can see that uh, these are called molybdenum cofactors. So, molybdenum cofactor a small uh, in the short form is written as MOCO, MOCO. So, that is MOCO is molybdenum cofactor. So, these are MOCO is molybdenum cofactor. And in the earlier case, Fimoco, iron molybdenum cofactor, iron molybdenum cofactor. So, I hope you understand this. Uh, so, they are uh, quite simple to keep in mind. And now, this one example, this particular thing is a cofactor, which is a part of the sulfide, oxida uh, sulfide oxidase family. 
we will come to this later in explaining their mechanistic aspects some more examples. Example uh, chicken sulphide oxidase, sulphide oxidase, sulphide dehydrogenase, dehydrogenase and oxidase as I said they are similar assimilatory nitrate reductase and that is what is one of the nitrogen cycle reaction and the catalytic subunit of the sulphide oxidase uh, in the homologue in E. coli. So, this is present this cofactor is present in all of these uh, systems all of these examples. Okay. Now, let us come to the other uh, part of it there is one more enzy enzyme where the molybdenum center just shifts by instead of molybdenum double bond S you have molybdenum uh, S16 or in other words molybdenum S16 is replaced by one molybdenum uh, double bond sulfur and that is the difference between the C structure and D structure. And this is again a molybdenum cofactor which is a part of another family the family called xanthine oxidase family. So, bovine xanthine oxidase bovine you know that cow. So, xanthine oxidase xanthine oxidase family includes the aldehyde oxidases too. So, we will come to all these examples uh, in this particular uh, co in this particular topic maybe in next one to half an hours of the classes that when we take. Okay. So, now what, what, what we have uh, uh, seen in, in, uh, in particular, so we have looked at two aspects one is the nitrogenase, nitrogenase is a reductive kind of an enzyme and then we have looked at some oxidoreductases other than this nitrogenase kind of thing and these have got uh, the nitrogenase has got iron molybdenum cofactor and whereas, the uh, molybdenum uh, enzymes re oxidoreductases have got the uh, terrin based cofactor as you can see over there and this particular case is a 1 is to 2 and the ones here sulphite oxidase and xanthine oxidase family have got 1 is to 1 with a, a slight difference at the molybdenum center. In one case molybdenum with the bonded to cysteine in the other case molybdenum bonded to sulphur. Uh, uh, with a double bond. So, these are the kinds of things. So, essentially we have seen two categories of enzymes nitrogenase enzyme and the oxidoreductase enzymes. First let us start with the enzyme nitrogenase. So, enzyme nitrogenase uh, uh, is basically this is produced in uh, variety of bacteria for example, cyanobacteria blue green algae and also this is present in a large number of plants. Uh, uh, because those those bacteria is present in their roots of those bacteria those plants and there again nitrogen is converted or nitrogen fixed. So, this particular enzyme is responsible as I have been telling all the time reduction of nitrogen or dinitrogen to ammonia. So, this is the reducing type of an enzyme. So, uh, so, uh, so, this is the only kind of a category of enzymes nitrogenase are the only category of enzymes which are known to catalyze the nitrogen to ammonia reaction and there is no other enzyme known till now which will fix the nitrogen. So, to fix the nitrogen it is only the nitrogenase either the nitrogen kinase can be either a molybdenum based one or the nitrogenase can be based on the vanadium, vanadium is less prevalent molybdenum is completely present everywhere. So, most common thing is nitrogenase with molybdenum. So, therefore, we study more details of the nitrogenase. As we keep going we will understand the complexities of this enzyme please keep uh, your focus on this. Nitrogen fixation is an important form of all life as nitrogen is an essential component for the biosynthesis of molecules like nucleotides amino acids modified molecules etcetera etcetera. So, therefore, the, the nitrogenase is only the enzyme which reduces the nitrogen to ammonia and this is a very important enzyme because this is where, where the one which gives the usable form of nitrogen species by the plants to convert into amino acids etcetera. So, the total reaction is as I mentioned earlier and written much better way here a much more extended way I do not mean the better way extended way that is I, what I have written earlier was N 2 plus uh, um, 8 uh, electrons plus 8 protons 
giving rise to to ammonia molecules and it does not happen in the enzyme as it is. Earlier I said that this reaction goes from N 2 plus 8 H plus plus 8 electrons giving 2 N H 3 plus H 2 this is what I said enzyme reaction. Now, I am saying this is not the only the enzyme reaction this is a part of the enzyme reaction, but requires something more. What is that something more? To do this reaction electron transfer should take place in order to do the electron transfer to take place it requires the energy. Therefore, the reaction is using uh, the, uh, the ATP uh, which consumes the ATP okay, plus 16 mg ATP. So, gives rise to 2 NH3 plus H2 plus 16 mg ADP plus 16 Pi. So, what does this tell? This tells this reaction is not a free flowing reaction, it is not a spontaneous reaction, it requires a lot of energy to be involved, it requires a large number of electrons to be involved, it requires a large number of protons to be involved. So, to bring proton, to bring electron, to hydrolyze magnesium ATP. So, that means the enzyme requires a huge number of different components. That is why this enzyme is a complex enzyme. As you can see, I will explain in the later slides more as one color, another color, another color, another color, another color, etcetera. You would see so many different colors to show different kind of a subunits. So, the nitrogenase, nitrogenase enzyme basically at the first stage let us learn that it has two components. One of the component is called the iron protein, other component is called the molybdenum iron protein. So, there are two systems. Now, uh, have you focus on this particular figure, this smaller portion of the circle where I am drawing, this is the uh, basically the iron protein and this huge one both the violet and the green one together is the uh, molybdenum iron uh, protein. So, this entire complex protein having 6 kinds of uh, subunits 1, 2, 3 and backside 4, 5 and 6 totally 6 subunits. This su 6 subunits uh, thing is basically nothing but it is known as uh, alpha 2, um, beta 2, gamma 2 protein. So, you will understand more when I keep uh, moving across this. So, at the right now you take it as uh, understanding the two portions, one portion is called the iron protein portion, other big portion is called the uh, iron molybdenum protein. Iron molybdenum protein has got four subunits, iron uh, protein has got two subunits, I will show you that also. Now, the in the iron protein you have two things, one is the iron sulfur cluster and the magnesium binding site for ATP followed by AD, ADP. Initially ATP when it is hydrolyzed it is ADP. Okay. And as you can see that this is the uh, iron protein part, this is the uh, iron molybdenum pro, uh, protein part, so or molybdenum iron protein part, this is iron sulfur cluster and this is where magnesium ATP complex and this is the molybdenum iron protein. Okay. So, as you can see in the molybdenum iron protein there is uh, the FEMOCO, this is uh, the molybdenum iron protein has got FEMOCO, it is called iron molybdenum uh, cofactor FEMOCO okay. and these are the P clusters I will explain. It. So, this is a basically a P cluster and this is a molybdenum uh, cluster, a molybdenum iron molybdenum cluster, iron molybdenum cofactor cluster this is. Now, you understand two parts, one is this one one is this one. Uh, okay. Now, as I said the first part is iron protein, iron protein has got the iron sulfur cluster and the magnesium phosphate uh, uh, ATP bound structure, it can also bind to magnesium ADP as well. And this is a dimer which is called gamma 2 dimer. So, the function of this particular protein is what? It has iron sulfur protein, so it will be involved in the electron transfer reaction and then the reducing agent and it will pick up from ferridoxins, flavodoxins, etcetera. 
So, it will pick up from there and give it to this protein. So, it will transfer the electrons required by taking from outside by using uh, energy. The energy is ATP hydrolysis. Okay. So, therefore, the important components of the ion protein is the ion sulfur cluster and the magnesium binding ATP ADP site and this particular thing this is the top portion uh, in the previous one sorry in this previous one this is this top portion and that is what we are uh, looking at. So, um, uh, we will continue with this particular uh, protein nitrogenase in the uh, next class. Thank you very much.